second show, and we'll start it in three, two. Good evening, and welcome back to the award-winning Thomas County Central Yellow Jacket Tailgate Show. I am Ray Drew here with Christian LeMay, who is a quarterback out of North Carolina. Thanks for being here with us, Christian. Thanks for having me. All right, um, Christian, uh, what school do you attend in North Carolina? Uh, Butler High School. Butler High School. Um, it's, I understand you all won state championship last year, right? Yeah, we did. So. That was pretty, that was pretty fun. Pretty fun. Uh, what, what was the most exciting part about the game? Uh, seeing seeing the final score, you know, we, it was a blowout, so it was like 48 to 20 something. So, you know, and then getting that ring after the fact, so it was pretty nice. Oh yeah, we got the the ring's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. it is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, and also Christian is a, 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 a quarterback, and uh, as far as ESPN and Rivals and all these other recruiting services go, he's ranked pretty high on their boards as well. Uh, would you talk, uh, care to talk about that uh, as far as your rankings? What? You um, I really don't look too deep into them. A lot of people talk about, oh, well, you're so highly ranked and this, that, and the other, but, you know, I don't let it really affect me. I stay grounded and uh, just keep grinding, you know, because it doesn't mean a thing and when you get to the next level. Exactly, and when you get to the next level, everybody's no more. Exactly, exactly. Uh, um, but as far as school options that you had to go to, like uh, how many offers did, did you end up with? 50 plus. So, uh, you know, stop count, stop count at a 50. So, uh, you know, kind of like yourself. Just uh, just took it all in stride and then, uh, you know, cut it down of it gradually and uh, found the place that was right for me. Okay, yeah, you did... Um, Something that I'm not doing when um, I'm gonna start doing here very soon. I'm, I gotta start cutting some things down. It's it, it getting very hectic. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it out there and let the fans know that you uh, have chosen to make your final stop at the University of Georgia. That's right. Uh, or you plan to go in and maybe contend for the quarterback position back there with Murray and all the other guys. Um, but out of all 50 plus schools that you had off you, why Georgia? Um, it just had a good family atmosphere, you know. Uh, first time I've ever met Coach Ray, uh, just brought me into his office and talked to me just straight up real as a, you know, as a uh, individual, you know, cared about me. He just asked about how my life was going, how my family was doing, how everything else was going and um, outside of football, you know. So it, it was really great just to see somebody that cared about me and my well-being more so than me coming to their school, you know. So it, it seemed like if even if I didn't go there, he'd still – you know, talk to me on the streets and things like that. So uh, just that, and then also coach, all the coaching staff just treats you uh, like a great human being, you know, and they tr help you to uh, become a productive citizen and uh, things of that nature. Plus their, their stance, uh, you know, with God being the main focus and then football, I really appreciate that and, you know, uh, some of my beliefs. So just somebody that appreciates, uh, you know, loving God and, uh, also glorifying him with with uh, our athletic abilities. So, uh, so just outside of uh, football, basically, you know, just you felt right. you felt that connection right. with him and everything, and, I, and I've noticed that as well. Uh, as far as my recruiting process goes, uh, you know, a lot of people would ha kill to have the opportunity that we have, where um, people call and talk to Coach Rick and Coach Saban and Coach Ryan and all these people, right. but we actually get to the point where we would like, stop calling. And see us on the daily basis. So it's like, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they call it. When you get like 20 and 30 calls a, a week, you know, yeah. it gets overbearing and all. A day in your case, probably. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> um, you're talking about Coach uh, Rick and, you know, with him being a very religious man and everything. Uh, how big of a role did that play in in, in your process? Because I know that you're, um, that you were brought up in a very religious home. Your dad's the pastor of a, a cha of Champion Christian Center, which is in Pineville, which is right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. And also, right. as far as from a religious standpoint, how big of a role did that play in your process? Um, it played a, a huge role because, you know, God's the first thing in my life. You know, without him, I wouldn't have the ability to play or even be alive, you know, because uh, uh, each one of us had a purpose, you know, and I found out that he uh, gave me the ability to do what I do because a lot of people, you know, are in awe of what me and you do and, you know, to us is a regular thing, so we're just blessed with the ability. <clears throat> so him, you know, putting that at the, fir at the forefront of uh, his program said a lot to me, you know, being bold about it and saying that uh, these are our standards and we're not going to compromise. So it was something that me and uh, talking to my family and they, was, they always uh, were saying that this has the right feel to it, that he's doing it not just for show, that he's really doing this because 
this is what he believes strongly, and he shows it. So uh, I, I really appreciate that, and that's something that I really love about him and the whole staff as well, and uh, just the environment there. It just seems like a good Christian environment, good, uh, good morals, you know, and they they're ground they're deeply rooted and grounded in it. So yeah. Now I'm gonna ask you: uh, Have you ever been to a Georgia football game? I actually went last weekend. So the last home the last home game they had. So. Now, um, everybody knows uh, switching or making the transition from high school to college is a very big transition. But as far as athletic, athletically goes, uh, when you go from playing in front of you know, two, three thousand people or so to playing in front of ninety-two thousand six hundred fans screaming their heads off, right. uh, now how how much pressure is that? Um, you especially at your position at quarterback, you know, a lot of blame gets put on the quarterback whenever things go wrong. Now, whereas you may have had to hear maybe just a little bit from yeah, the from your mama, mama your sister, that, yeah, yeah. Now you're gonna have people criticizing you, like nationwide. Now, right. uh, what, what, how do you think you're gonna deal with that? Do you think that you're gonna let that get the best of you, or um, if you let it get the best of you, then you're not, you know, fulfilling your duties. You know, as a quarterback, you have to know that it's not about you you know of course you you decide to be in that position in the limelight of course i'm not there yet so i don't know to the full extent of it but you know uh <clears throat> you just have to be able to accept the blunt of it and know that all right there's a lot of talk all you, you have to know that you have to have a good nucleus of people around you and know that all right my coaches my family and that my teammates are going to tell me the truth everybody else is just onlookers you know and you got to know why you do it you know um a lot of people go through a lot of criticism and no matter how great or how how bad or they are, you know, uh, they they all go through great scrutiny. So you have to be able to take it in stride and uh, just know know who you play for. So I know that I don't play for myself, or you know, I play for God first, and uh, hopefully uh, doing that and making Him happy makes everybody else happy. If not, then uh, <laughs> I can't I can't say too much for you. So. And with that being said, I just I want you to uh, hear one of one of my favorite uh, sayings. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, brother. <laughs> one, one guy was um, made the statement. He said, "If you make it big in life, you're gonna have people to say, I knew it. If you fail in life, people are gonna say, I knew it.' That's true. So if you make it, big, they're, they're gonna be on your bandwagon. That's oh, I true. knew he was gonna do good. I knew he was gonna make it." But as soon as you don't do whatever mm -hmm. everyone's expecting you to do, oh, I knew he wasn't going to make it. You know, he wasn't everything he was put right. up to be. Right. So, you know, just keep a level head, you know, do what you do best. And uh, put God first, as, as I know you've already done. And okay. as, I hope and pray that you continue to do that. And as far as um, <clears throat> the next few years go for you, I wish you the best of luck and much success. And that's about it for tonight. So thank you for being here with us. I'm Ray Drew from the TCCHS Broadcast and Video Production Department. Uh, that's all for our part of tonight's tailgate show. But stay tuned because more of the award-winning Thomas County Central Yellow Jacket tailgate show is coming up right after these commercial messages. All right, next section of the tailgate show in three, two. Welcome back to the award-winning Thomas County Central Yellow Jacket Tailgate Show. I am Katie Corbin here with Nick Self, who is a senior broadcasting, who is a senior in broadcasting and in the Yellow Jacket Marching Band. Thanks for being here, Nick. Thanks for having me, Katie. Um, what are students currently working on in broadcasting? Um, in broadcasting, we're working on our competition feature, the Advanced 